Hi, welcome to Teardown Tuesday. Now, I've been doing this blog for like three and a half years now, and being the engineer that I am, I'm a natural tight ass, so I naturally skimp on my video gear. I get the camera that's, well, just good enough to get the job done. Us engineers, we can get by on pretty much anything, but, well, now I'm a video blogging professional, and I need serious professional video gear to do this job, to be in the business. So, decided, bugger it, I'm gonna mortgage the house, spare no expense, and invest in the latest technology video camera money can buy. And here it is, check it out. The Sony Video 8. Look at this, viewfinder. Oh man, this does this look professional or what? I'm now fully equipped for practically anything. 230 lines of stunning analog resolution. It's got auto focus. Can you believe it? So you can expect first class stunning quality from the video blog from now on with this puppy. Could do almost anything. And yes, I'm available for hire. I'll blog weddings, bar mitzvahs, anything. So although this beast is worth an absolute fortune, yes, I'm willing to sacrifice it to do a complete teardown here on the EV blog. Be a world first. Let's go. Well, folks, it would have been state of the art in 1985. Yes, that's 85. That's 27 years ago. The same year Back to the Future came out. And this is the Sony uh, CCD V8 AF. Now, this is the autofocus model. It, uh, it came out shortly before this one with a manual uh, focus model only, but that didn't last long, and that one's quite rare, apparently. Um, it's got a 250K CCD uh, image sensor in it. It's got autofocus. That's probably or the autofocus sensor up there. It's got built-in boom mic. And, of course, these cameras back in the day, no such thing as an LCD. You got a little... CRT viewfinder like that. So you've seen people walking around with these things on their shoulders in old, uh, you know, news footage and old, you know, home videos and stuff like that. So this was a pretty much state of the art in 1985. And it is a world first to support that analog format video eight. That's not the more recent uh, digital versions. This is the analog format. And well, it's going to be interesting to see what's in a 1985 vintage camcorder. And as for the physical design of this thing, you can see the physical hand strap here with the record start stop button. On top of that there is the zoom in, zoom out button. It's got a time six uh, lens on it and the battery, this is the battery compartment as well so the battery goes in here and it's got a little bit of uh, padding on this side here because this sits up against your face and while you're looking at the viewfinder in there it's an absolute classic the viewfinder flips in and out so whether or not you want to use it you can just whack it out of the way there and it does seem to have like a separate power system there's a camera power switch here just for the uh, just for the camera power itself as you can see and it's got white balance controls focus controls and uh, backlight and a record preview button and there's the uh, zoom control it does actually have a built-in motor to it so that will actually turn when you hit the zoom button up on top here and then we've got our uh, focus system from uh, short I don't think it's got no macro mode or anything like that and uh, it, I think, don't think it focuses on anything under three feet or something like that. So it's uh, very, very limited, and that's presumably to do with the autofocus system, which I heard worked um, fairly horribly or didn't actually work at all. So you can actually flip it through to manual focus and use that. So the VTR itself also has its own power, VTR, video tape recorder, power there's separate eject and separate play review and all that and a tape counter on here standard play mode or long play mode for lower quality i guess if you you know if you didn't need your full 320 or is it 240 lines of resolution or something it's pretty horrid anyway um it doesn't appear 
to work. I can't actually get anything up on the uh, CRT uh, screen up here and the uh, tape just automatically ejects uh, back out whenever I put it in. So it seems to have a few issues, but it's a great candidate for a teardown. And it's rather interesting just to compare the size and the form factor of these classic shoulder mount camcorders to a recent full HD uh, Canon HFM 400 camcorder here. There's just, you know, there's no contest at all. The technology is just phenomenal. And it's, we're talking 240 lines of resolution as opposed to full HD, you know, 1920 by 1080. That's just, ah, man, unbelievable progress. And on the bottom of the unit here, we've got a standard uh, tripod mount and there's a sliding door here, which has an, what do they call it? A, uh, a multi-connector <laughs> interface. And it came with this um, audio input and output plus an RF modulator, which just uh, has a matching connector and that just plugs into the bottom like that. Woohoo, stunning 240 line quality composite in and out with RF modulator. Oh, can't beat it. And it also comes with a battery release mechanism like this. And this is actually not a battery. This is a charger for it. This is the actual charger, which then plugs into the mains, of course, 240. And that's how you actually power the thing up. Go figure. And we'll obviously have to do the viewfinder separately because it just unplugs here with this connector and you can just slide that off. So we'll have a look at that uh, uh, viewfinder later. So that should be interesting in its own right. But let's, and the uh, mic, let's have a look at this actually. Mic just sort of unscrews there and pulls out. And on the end of that, look at that. We've got some uh, TRS jacks. So you know what we say here on the EEV blog. Don't turn it on, take it apart. We immediately come to an interesting thing in here, which I believe is the autofocus sensor. I'm uh, not 100% sure, but I can't think of anything else that would be in there. And it's got a couple of springs and it's got a little, it's got a little lens mechanism on the front. Then it goes into this uh, sensor device here. Your guess is as good as mine how that works. And a couple of, looks like it's gunked down. Looks like there's a bit of gunk on these screws down in here and there's some springs in there as well. Some old fashioned autofocus system. Maybe that's the thing that didn't work very well at all. And I've taken the cover off the tape transport mechanism here and you can see down into it, it looks like any classic sort of uh, VCR video cassette recorder. We can see the drum down in there and all the various uh, parts, aspects you would expect in a typical uh, VCR. You've seen me do a uh, little mini teardown of a VCR before and well, very similar except this is not a VHS system. It is the Video 8 system. I've taken the screws off this top bit and it looks like it's just going to, yeah, it's just going to pop out. We've got something up. That's for the mic. That's for the microphone. So, uh, yeah, that is a connector in there. We'll disconnect that. There we go. Bang, we're in. So there's a the little mic uh, preamp down in there by the looks of it. Oh, fancy surface mount. Whoa, not bad for 1985. So let's, uh, we've got a big metal shielded can, something or other in there, more surface mount. Oh, advanced stuff. And it looks like this uh, side panel is just gonna pop out here if I take another screw out I found in here. And these things are very, should be very repairable, actually, in the scheme of uh, things compared to modern, modern uh, camcorders anyways. If I pop the bottom off here, ta-da, look at that. Then we should be able to pop off these side panels, in theory, unless, no, there's another screw down in there. 
So let's just undo this puppy and that should give us the entire side panel. I think these controls should, yeah, they're going to pop out too. Ta-da! And let's have a look. Ah, uh -huh, here we go. Look at that. Bingo, we're in. Oh. And let's pop this side out. Oh, here we go. Now it's all now it's all fallen to bits. It's oops. Okay. There we go. We've got our tape transport mechanisms all falling out of its own accord. And uh, it's really starting to look like a bit of a mess. Woo! Look at that. And even in 1985, they had software bugs. So it really is quite messy now. Our entire tape transport mechanism, they really liked their uh, shielding around the outside there. I guess they deemed that was necessary. So, but. The thing is, it really is quite modular. That is the entire tape transport mechanism. There's very little going across. We've got a tiny little wiring harness, a little bit of uh, video stuff happening there. But apart from that, they are entirely separate mechanisms, which makes sense considering that they had power systems. You could switch the camera on. Seems that you could switch the camera on separately to the uh, uh, VTR uh, tape recorder system. So. That's just a little interface jack for the viewfinder. So if we separate these, um, there's not much to it at all. Here is the uh, just the charger system. It's got it's fused down in there. Nothing terribly exciting. The contacts, nothing exciting. We've got a switch here. I'm not actually sure what that switch did. I don't have access to the manual for this thing or anything. But let's disconnect all this and try and get further. And as you can see, there is very little joining the two, really. This is the uh, control board for the uh, white balance and the, uh, the controls for the camera head, which is over here. And then the recorder over here, it's just got these couple of little wiring harnesses. There's a couple of little mini coaxes in there. So they're obviously uh, video and a few miscellaneous control signals. But that is about it. They had separate power going to both modules from the uh, battery connector, but that's that's about it. So very, very modular. And they're grounding the two systems as well. There's this ground lead here, which then pops over through there and over to the top of here, which joins the grounds between the two systems. So we should be able to pop those out and pop up this little wiring harness here. So there's not too much to it. There's these two connectors and that's about all she wrote. And they even thoughtfully provide a little bullet connector here. Once you get these two off, a little bullet connector to disconnect the ground between the two. Maybe that's some sort of uh, servicing thing or something because we've got the ground. We've still got this ground strap here. I mean, presumably this is another ground signal, I think. I haven't traced it out yet, but they've deliberately, they've gone to the trouble to heat shrink that and uh, put that in there. So maybe it just allows you to disconnect um, a, a ground, some sort of ground for diagnostic or servicing purposes, perhaps, because these things would have been designed with the services, servicing in mind. I mean, you know, in 1985, we hadn't entered the uh, disposable electronics era at all. So these things were designed to be serviceable. And as for the video head here, it looks like all these custom plastics just sort of pull out of there like that. Quite a complex system design. I mean, when you've got a designer, imagine designing this thing and, you know, they would have designed this in 1983, 1984, you know, and you've got to mold all these, do all these molded plastics. I mean, what sort of computer-aided design did they have back then? Bugger all, really. I mean, not much, but they had to mould that to go all the way over that. And, uh, oh, there we go. Check this out. This is interesting. Look at this. And, yeah, this is clearly the autofocus mechanism up here because it can control 
see that little spring and that rod in there it actually when you rotate the focus on the camera here that rod in there goes up and down you see a spring down in there and you can see the autofocus sensor in there we've got the lens and it's just like a you know some sort of uh, two pin um, you know photo transistor kind of you know photo diode kind of thing and it physically moves it up physically moves that up the position of that thing up and down within side the focal distance of this fixed lens in here and if we have a look at the largest board on the bottom of the tape transport mechanism here it's absolutely classic 80s sort of uh you know japanese consumer equipment uh design with in terms of the uh taped artwork uh track layout and uh, you know the construction of the surface mount devices and you can see that they're using a delay line here um, an analog delay line I'm not sure what they've got a delay line in there for if anyone's familiar with uh, video 8 uh, recording mechanisms and uh, stuff like that you may know what that thing's used for if so leave it in the comments I mean check that out it's just classic construction quality of the time and you can see those red marks under the components are the glue to hold them in place while they very shoddily uh, <laughs> solder the things in place they certainly hadn't um, uh, you know perfected the uh, pick and place machines and reflow soldering that they have these days it's a totally different era indeed and uh, look up here I mean you know they couldn't even get the solder mask between the pins on that thing so on that chip there so they had to leave all the solder mask off you can see the flux residue still on there and ah, it's just yeah that's pretty horrible stuff but it worked no wonder this thing failed it says made in Japan what are you talking about doc all the best stuff's made in Japan well this tape transport mechanism is absolute chock-a-block with electronics we've got a board here on the side we've got another one on the back which has our shielding and all the adjustment uh, pots down through there so that's sort of like all the uh, analogy type recording stuff we've got the main board on the bottom here there's another board right down in there under that then we've got well there's another board over here with a super cap on it and then we have the uh, microcontroller board for the front panel and the tape counter mechanism and uh, all of the controls which was you know really fancy pantsy for the day and uh, and there's another little tiny board whacked down in there and this is really advanced stuff I mean how many engineering hours went into this thing in terms of just system engineering this and how many engineers worked on it a, a phenomenal amount I'm sure and just out of curiosity got it completely disconnected to the uh, uh, to the video head of course and we've just got the power coming directly in here and it should operate as a complete independent mechanism so let's turn on the VTR power ta-da there it is and maybe if we eject hey there we go look at that so let's whack our uh, tape in there and see what happens so here we go it came with a BASF uh, 90 minute uh, video 8 tape premium high grade oh, made in Germany hi to all my German viewers fantastic so let's whack this thing in here because this thing wasn't ejecting before as the full thing it was sort of just uh, sort of getting stuck so let's whack it in there and boom the tape transport mechanism goes around and that seems to be working it didn't do that before it wasn't it was automatically ejecting the tape and so there was some sort of sensor thing stopping it doing that so now I should be able to uh, fast forward this yep now it's decided it's going to work woohoo look at that should be able to get the video out of this thing so if you haven't seen a video 8 tape transport mechanism work before here we go I put it in 
and you'll notice, you know, once it, it flips down in there, it'll automatically uh, open up this flap on here and pull the tape out, wrap it right around the head there, the drum, and watch it. There it is, there's the tape, bang, pulls it around, rotates, boom. Very complicated little mechanism, but I love it. And we'll stop it and let's eject it and watch it come out. It returns the tape back to its position and boom I love it great stuff and there you go I hooked it up and we are getting a video a really very awful video signal out of this it looks like it is somebody playing golf on this thing I'm not kidding it is uh, let's rewind it here it was better at the start, so I've got no idea if, you know, you have to hook up the control signals between the two. I doubt it, but it does seem to be generating at least a video signal on one of the connectors here. And you can see, clearly, there's somebody playing golf there. There we go. It's, it's pretty horrible, so I'm not sure why it's uh, horrible like that, but they're lining up for their swing, and there they go. Woohoo! I just got that from just uh, probing one of the uh, coaxes on here like this and using one of these car rear vision uh, monitor things. You know, it just takes composite video input. It's pretty crusty, but uh, we certainly can pick out that video there. It's actually not bad now. It seems to have, uh, seems to have settled in reasonably well there. You know, it's, it's certainly not uh, first-class video, but you can make that out. I wonder who that is. Could be an early Tiger Woods? Nah. And if you look down in there, you can see the little photo transistor, photo diode combination, which matches up with this hole on the bottom of the cassette here that goes into there, and that's what looks like. It detects that there's a tape hooked in. Look at that. So there we go. That's, you just noticed it go there and whoop, it pops out. So if we push this mechanism down, it does absolutely nothing because it doesn't know there's a cassette in there. And we put our fingers over that. Boom, there we go. And for those who want a close up action of the Video 8 head spinning, here we go. Woohoo! And if we undo this little latch on here, we just pull it off and it latches off then we've got this rather unique, I haven't actually seen these before, but I don't service a lot of you know, consumer gear like this, but that's actually a hinged, right-angled, board-to-board -board interconnect connector. Check that out. I mean, it's actually got a hinge mechanism in there. You can see it. There it is, down in there. And... They, these are soldered in connectors, they're right angle, and they just unfold like that for servicing. I mean, I can't disconnect that board. I would have to actually unsolder all the connections on one side or one of the boards here, but that's a really neat, that's a really neat mechanism to get in there and service that. It's absolutely brilliant. And check this out, we've got like a classic bodged connector on there, you can see the resistor the surface mount resistor underneath that there and they've just gone oh bugger that we'll just whack that in there bung it in couldn't bother couldn't be bothered doing a respin on that and uh it's you know it really is quite classic sort of 80s consumer gear construction i really love it there's the main uh, processor it's an nec 7503 and a couple of miscellaneous support circuits there's uh, you know lots of custom there's going to be a lot of custom sony stuff on this sony did a lot of their own uh either a lot of their own chips or they've rebranded them um sony so you know classic 4069 on there what else have we got i don't know it doesn't matter i'm not going to go into a circuit breakdown of this thing i'm more interested in the just the physical construction side of things you can see all the adjustment pots on this thing. I mean, there's still adjustment. There's a cap, what is it, LP, a low pass adjust and stuff like that. There's all sorts of various 
uh, adjustments where you've got to get a little tiny jeweler's screwdriver through some of these holes. They really are quite tiny. And that can in there looks like it's the DC motor which drives the tape transport mechanism. And this board down the bottom is the DC input board. That's the board I was actually powering the thing from there. And you can see it's got a 0.02 farad uh, super cap on there. We've got looks like a, uh, a power transistor there and a couple of miscellaneous parts. That's just providing power to the whole thing. We've got uh, some sort of shielded can up here, which is the video, some sort of video uh, amp or something like that because it has the wiring harness with the video out coming out of it. So uh, that's, and of course there's another double-sided shielded can on here, front and back of the board with various adjustment pots. So that'd be various bias and adjustment things for the, for the uh, video head and stuff like that, I would presume. And who knows what this board over here, I mean, it's a CX, you know, 20114, who knows? Not gonna bother Googling it, but uh, it's, you know, there's a couple of other Sony CX parts on there as well. I presume they're Sony. And I guess you could get the full service manual for this thing too, which uh, if you wanna go into it, hey, we do have a label though. We do have, there it is, comb filter. So we've got our comb filter down there got our Y process so they do it looks like they have labeled the modules here so that's our comb filter our Y process what's that top one I can't see any label that's the C process section timing control circuitry so they have modularized this quite nicely and actually labeled the silk screen I rather like that we've got another hinged board here this is uh, part of the uh, the audio stuff it's saying audio on the back and another Sony uh, branded CX part. It's a 20037. And I love these hinge boards. Ah, oh, it's a thing of beauty, a joy forever. So that's the tape transport mechanism, which uh, still works intact. I, I love that. Brilliant design. And, uh, but I expected a lot more uh, through hole uh, circuitry on there but I guess this is uh, you know to get these things uh, down to the size of what was these shoulder camcorders are uh, back in the early 80s I you know they had to go predominantly surface mount and unfortunately it looks like the same trick doesn't seem to work for the video head itself and the viewfinder I can't seem to uh, power this thing up independently at all and uh, get an image out of it bummer but anyway um even before i took this thing apart i was getting like just a blank screen on the viewfinder it just didn't seem to be uh, working at all and it looks like all of this top board in here is inside this uh, metal shielded can so we'll have to just uh, pop all this stuff up and open her up and this video head is a rather complicated little beast to uh, get apart it's uh, all over the shop lots of ah uh, oh man I'm really not being gentle with this at all but there are lots of interconnected mechanical bits and it really is quite a pain in the ass and this looks like the video output amplifier or something like that and it's its own little shielded can stuck down in the side of here real pain in the butt no that's ah oh, that's physically soldered down into there how annoying Grr. And I've got down to the point where the lens mechanism is attached to the back electronics board, presumably where the CCD sensor is uh, mounted on the box in that can in there. You can see all these lovely adjustment pots on the side there. And uh, we're, we're getting in it like, you know, I can crack this thing uh, open in terms of the shielding on it, but I'm not sure how that's actually held in place there. I guess I gotta lift the, maybe, oh yeah, here we go, the shielding sort of 
this out here, if I can get rid of this tape, here we go. 1980s vintage tape, hey, there we go. There we go, it is mounted, yep, directly onto that board in there. And this is our focus motor here. If I turn that, you can, no, you may not be able to see it, but there's a little, you can see the pulley, the little belt in there going around for, so that's the focus motor. And this motor down here is clearly the zoom motor. I mean, you can do the manual zoom like that, or it's the override there. And you can see the see the cog down in there. That's the override. That's the motor override for the uh, manual or electronic zoom. And that last little bastard of a shield down in there is connected through with ah, solder wire. There it is. Got it. Shield finally off the entire electronics mechanism for the CCD camera. Sorry folks, it's 6.23 p.m. The wife just rung up to remind me that I have to get home in five minutes. So unfortunately, um, I might have to make a part two of this teardown. It's probably already uh, long enough, but there you go. That is inside a classic uh, 1985 vintage, 27 year old, uh, actually the first uh, video eight camcorders on the market. If you want to discuss it, jump on over to the EEV blog forum. And if you like Teardown Tuesday, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to complain about me having to go home early and not finish this teardown, send your letters in writing to she who must be obeyed at PO Box 7949 Balkham Hills, New South Wales 2153 Australia, not Austria. Catch you next time.